All right, guys, so up to 1,500 people are dying every single day due to the COVID-19 virus. Um, and uh, that's a pretty big deal. So many people are not taking this problem seriously. And so that's what we're talking about today. If you go to the grocery store, you'll only see about 25% of people actually wearing masks. And that means that 75% of people really aren't taking this seriously. They're not doing their part to um, protect themselves and protect other people around them. And so um, that's really what we're talking about in this uh, presentation today. And so um, basically our question for you is, are you doing your part? So, sorry, next slide. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the COVID-19 virus. Um, unless you guys have been living under a rock, you probably already know some about it, but we're gonna give you some facts about the virus, um, how it spread, and what you can do to slow the spread. So Dustin, why don't you take it away? Awesome. So um, you may have seen uh, the term COVID-19 um, in the news, or you've heard coronavirus thrown around. Um, just to kind of get that across, what that means, basically the CO is corona, the VI is virus, and the D is disease. And obviously this is something that um, became a thing last year, so thus COVID-19. Um, this is a new disease, as I was just saying. Um, it wasn't previously found in humans. It was more so in animals and in other things, um, but it has since then moved to humans. Um, but basically what it is, it's, it's an infectious disease that's caused um, by severe acute respiratory syndrome. Um, basically, um, it moves through your respiratory system and spreads throughout your whole body, um, but that's basically kind of what COVID-19 is, um, yeah. Yeah, next one. Um, um, I think we skipped one. Okay, so as, as far as facts go about the virus, just so you understand a little bit more of, of who is considered at risk, um, ultimately we're all considered at risk um, just because it's such an aggressive virus. But to be more specific, um, those that are age 65 and above um, are more at risk than, you know, people our age, for example, um, in their in their 20s and 30s. Um, but uh, outside of that, people that have health conditions like chronic lung disease and severe asthma, heart conditions, if they're uh, pre-diabetic or if they are diabetic. If they're obese, which usually falls under that category a lot of the time as well, and then uh, any sort of like chronic kidney or lung disease, um, all of these people are considered more at risk than the average individual. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a vast amount of people, but uh, those are the ones considered more at risk. Um, as far as symptoms and signs go, um, there's a whole bunch of different symptoms that, uh, that uh, doctors have been able to, um, to see as they've tested people and as they've been admitted to hospitals, but a few of which are fever, fatigue, dry cough, um, aches and pains, runny noses, diarrhea, nasal congestion, and sore throat. So um, these are a lot of things that we feel, you know, when we have the flu or other types of diseases, but... Uh, you know, they're, they're the same types of symptoms that we would feel for COVID-19 as well. And so that's just a few um, facts of, uh, about the virus and, and who's at risk. Um, oh, go ahead. So basically, the reason why we're asking you to do your part um, is because this virus spreads so rapidly and it's extremely infectious. Um, according to the CDC, the main way that the coronavirus is spread, um, it's through person-to-person -person contact. If you're under six feet of someone and um, who has been exposed to this, uh, to this illness, um, if they sneeze or cough, um, or even if they're talking to you, 
um, you can contract this disease. Um, the way that it's spread is through, you know, coughing and sneezing through little droplets um, that are passed along through the air. And um, the studies have shown um, that you could also give somebody this uh, virus to someone else, even if you don't have, aren't showing any sim symptoms. So it's, a, it's extremely important to um, wear a mask, especially around your loved ones, because you wouldn't want to give your grandmother this disease. And um, yeah, so now on this next slide, this is the, a map and, and the statistics of the US right now, as we can see in this, uh, in this map, um, places with higher densely populated, um, cities with higher densely populated people um, are clearly more likely to get, um, get the disease, places like New York and California. Um, in our own state right now, um, there's been reported 4,307 cases um, and out of those cases, 44 deaths. And so we're just asking you to do your part. And um, it's extremely important that you wear masks. Um, and I, there's a, on the next slide, we'll start talking about what kind of masks um, there are available. Okay, perfect. So, you know, like Ben was talking about leaning into the masks, the reason the masks are so important is because it'll help us uh, slow the spread a little bit. And in this, in this slide right here, it's, this is the N95 mask that a lot of people have probably heard about, a lot of you have heard about on the, on the news. And that's because these are, these are the masks that, um, you know, the medical professionals need, the ones who are on the front lines need to, because these are the most, these are the ones that will do the best job against, you know, fighting against the coronavirus, trying not to get it and preventing the spread of it. Um, and this is just, you know, a quote that from, that I found on, on the FDA talking about these N95 masks. And another reason they're in the headlines now is because we're really trying to preserve them as much as possible because, you know, as, as we all know, this came out of nowhere. We weren't really expecting it. We weren't ready. And so they're in pretty short supply because it's not something that you kind of reuse. I mean, um, ideally you just use it once and then you throw it away. They're, they're just disposable masks, but they're really good. So that's, we, that's what we need to do our part by conserving them. And, in these next couple slides, I'm going to talk about what we can do as general public to, as alternatives for these masks. So here are some alternatives to the N95 or other surgical masks that, like I said before, our medical our medical professionals need that are on the front line, and it's it's really simple. Um, I think a lot of you know that we can use um, even clothes, homemade. You know, these are things I found out there that people are doing that that it's working just as good. And it kind of going off of what Bennett said, the reason why it's important to wear them is because if you're asymptomatic or meaning that you don't have any symptoms, you could still spread it to someone. But if you wear a mask that really lowers the chance of you spreading it to people, especially people you, like family members, friends that you come into close contact with. And now just the, the most common um, homemade masks that people wear are just made out of you know common cloth that people have laying around the house they're making extra they're using them to make some masks and as you can see here and it's just really important like i said before because we need to be using masks like these so that um the medical professionals the people that really do need the n95 and surgical masks so that they can have them and not because we're in such a short short supply short, short supply of them that's why it's really important that we make these cloth masks and and use them instead of the surgical ones Okay, um, and to kind of touch base on cloth masks, um, I'll step back a little bit. It's already been touched on, but um, we know from recent studies that um, a significant portion of individuals with uh, coronavirus lack symptoms or are asymptomatic. And even those who eventually develop symptoms um, can transmit the virus to others before showing symptoms. Um, so this means the virus can spread between people uh, interacting in close proximity, um, for example, speaking, coughing, sneezing, etc. 
So in light of this uh, evidence, uh, the CDC uh, recommends wearing cloth face coverings um, in public settings where uh, social distancing measures are difficult to maintain, uh, such as at the grocery store or if you're at the pharmacy, um, especially in areas um, of significant community-based uh, transmission. Um, let's see, I think you can go to the next slide. Uh, the cloth coverings will provide a bit of respiratory protection, which can reduce the depositing of the droplets um, of the virus on surfaces and to people near uh, you. Um, wearing a mask is good for a couple reasons. Uh, it's going to cut down 95% of the breathing that sends uh, the virus up to six feet away in a room. Um, if you touch a contaminated surface and then your face, uh, this will slow down the virus a lot. Um, and then the next slide, uh, just touching on a lot of this can be about protecting others and not necessarily yourself. Um, this scientific research uh, to date suggests cloth and homemade masks do a much better job of protecting other people from you rather than protecting you from other people. Uh, so in the context of a pandemic, um, stopping the infection in both directions uh, can be equally important in preventing a communicable uh, disease from spreading from one person to the next. And that's what I have. You can go on to the next slide. Yeah, and you know, especially with the way that it's all been communicated, there's a lot of unknown, a lot of like, a lot of scary stuff that's going on with COVID-19. Um, with our kind of focus on masks, because I'm going to transition on kind of how we move forward from this and how masks are a part of that. But I wanted to kind of start off with, I wanted to kind of wrap this up with some good news. Um, kind of like it was stated before, data is showing that if you're generally healthy and kind of and under that 60 to 65, and your chance of dying or even like developing severe symptoms is like, is incredibly slim, near zero actually. Um, so as we start to kind of open back up and um, kind of get back to a kind of our new normal, um, that's something to keep in mind, especially, um, I mean, a lot of us are, the people that are listening to this are college age students. Um, you can kind of have some peace of mind knowing that as you kind of go back into the world, um, your chances of getting this disease are probably high, but the chances of basically developing severe symptoms are pretty low. Um, and also this, this broke, um, today or yesterday, um, the New York times reported that an Oxford group has actually discovered a vaccine that's now entered human trials. Um, the rhesus macaw is a monkey, basically the closest monkey to human beings. And they basically inoculated these 28 monkeys with the COVID-19 um, virus after they've received the vaccine and all 28 monkeys 30 days later are still doing like just fine. They never even developed symptoms of the disease. Um, what's cool about this is they were already kind of studying the strains of this disease and we're kind of already ahead of schedule. And so basically if the trials and the human trials prove effective, they could have 2 million doses ready by September, which would probably be one of the biggest scientific feats um, basically ever. And so as far as good news goes, um, the models are suggesting that we have flattened the curve, um, which is good so that we didn't overwhelm our healthcare system. But as we kind of go on to the next slide, um, we can kind of talk about how we go forward with that. You know, Because in conclusion, Masks are going to be a part of our life as we go back to work, as we go out, because um, all of us have grandparents. All of us have people that are kind of in the high risk category that have the pre existing conditions. These masks are not there so much to protect you, they're to protect those people that are most vulnerable to it. 
Um, wearing them correctly is key. Um, you know, making sure that they're over our nose and mouth. And then um, kind of like I was saying, we're gonna have to open things up eventually um, as we've flattened the curve. And even if a vaccine is not on the way for another year, um, those at low risk, you know, as we start to open things back up are gonna have to go back to work and masks are gonna be the future. And they're, they're kind of inconvenient, but we kind of live in a really- Inconvenient time, but- um, What's really important is that we are all good citizens, that we all act the, as the best citizens as we possibly can to protect as many people as we can, while at the same time protecting the, um, the future and the longevity of, um, of the economy of our country. Um, and so basically I just would challenge you to, um, follow CDC recommendations and, and, um, you know, just be the best citizens that you can be. Anyways, we're, we're grateful that you guys were able to watch this and, um, we just challenge you to stay safe and do what's best for you and your family. So thank you.